I'm hydroponics farmer Joe from Green Our Planet and I have a question for you. Have you ever seen one of these before? Did someone say remote control for a TV? That's right, but this isn't just any remote, it's a magic remote. That's because when I press this button right here, it does something magical. It takes me to any habitat I want to go to in the world. Do you know what a habitat is? A habitat is the natural home where different plants and animals live. Polar bears live where it's freezing, right? And whales live in the sea. Those are habitats, and this remote allows me to pop in and out different habitats anytime I want. You don't believe me? We'll just watch. Let's go someplace warm. Oh, I thought I pressed the button for a warm habitat. Oh well, you know where I am right now? I'm near the North Pole. This is called the polar habitat and boy, it's cold. There's nothing living up here but some seals, some snow rabbits and uh oh, a polar bear. I better click on a different button Whew. I got out of that habitat just in the nick of time. So I'm not sure which button I pressed, but it kind of looks like I'm in Africa. Wow, look at those giraffes. It must be Africa because giraffes only live in Africa. And check out those elephants. So do you know what kind of habitat this is? It's called a grassland habitat because there's lots and lots of grass that many of the animals here eat. Which means you have to be careful because sometimes there's predators that hide in the grass. Uh-oh, there's a lion. I better get out of here. Holy moly, where are we now? Check out those huge trees and those cool looking monkeys. And look, there is a sloth. So we must be in Central or South America. You know why? Because sloths are only found in Central and South America. They're not found anywhere else. So you know what habitat this must be? It's a rainforest because there's so much rain and it's always warm. In a rainforest, there's lots and lots of plants, and there's also lots and lots of animals that feed on those plants. Wow, check out some of those crazy insects. Ow, I just got bit by a mosquito. There's another one, and another one. Boy, there's not only a lot of insects in a rainforest, but in this one, there's also a ton of mosquitoes. I'm out of here. Whew. Wow, I just got bitten alive and barely got out of there. But where are we now? Hey, look, there's a camel. And look at all this sand. 
We must have landed in a desert habitat. Do you know what a desert habitat is? It's a place that's pretty much the opposite of a rainforest because it hardly rains at all. And you know what? I don't hear any mosquitoes anymore. That's because there's not a lot of water in the desert habitat and mosquitoes need water to reproduce. So it's kind of nice to be in a desert habitat right now, although it's kind of hot. And you know something else? Camels can go up to 15 days without drinking. But you know how long people can go without drinking water? In a hot habitat like this one, only two or three days. Boy, I could sure use a drink right now. So I need to figure out which button will take me to an aquatic habitat because I need to find some water. Well, I'm in the water, so this must be an aquatic habitat. Look at all the life here. And look at all those fish. And uh-oh, a shark. I better get out of here. Whew. You know what? I pressed the home button and here I am just in the nick of time. That was so much fun. So do you know what we just did? We just visited five of the major habitats on Earth. The polar habitat, where I almost got eaten by a polar bear. The grassland habitat in Africa, where I got chased by a lion. The rainforest habitat, where I almost got eaten alive by mosquitoes. The desert habitat, where it was hot and I got really thirsty. And the aquatic habitat, where I was lucky enough to see a shark, but couldn't drink anything because it was salt water. And you know what? I could really use a glass of water. Mmm, that's so good. So now I have a question for you. If there are five main habitats on Earth, are there any habitats that people create that are not natural? I'll give you a hint. It's a habitat where we grow vegetables. Do you want to find out? Come on! Hmm, do you know where we are now? Any guesses? We've just been transported to a school garden. So I have a question for you. Is a school garden a natural habitat or is it a habitat created by people? Is it an aquatic habitat? <laughs> no. Is it a polar habitat? No, it's not. Is it a grassland habitat? A rainforest habitat? A desert habitat? No, it's not. A school garden is a very special habitat that people create. To create this habitat, we have to bring in water and rich soil and have to plant seeds that were bought from a store. But you know what? Even though it's a habitat people created, plants are still growing here and attracting lots of insects. Let's look at some of them. There's so many of them. There's bees, there's butterflies, there's some moths, and look, there's even a hummingbird. So a lot of these insects are what we call good insects. They're insects that pollinate our plants so that our plants can reproduce. But just like those mosquitoes that attacked me in the rainforest habitat today, there are also bad insects. Insects that bite us or destroy our vegetables. Take a look. Do you see all these holes in the leaves? Do you know what's causing them? There's a problem. We've got caterpillars eating our leaves. And over here, these plants are not looking healthy. They've got some kind of problem. I think it's aphids. And these bean plants also are not looking good. What's going on with them? 
Uh-oh. They're being attacked by stink bugs. Seems like our vegetable garden is under attack. What can we do? I know. Wow, look at all of this. Do you know where we are right now? It's a totally man-made habitat. This is a giant hydroponics garden. All of these plants are growing in plastic pipes that have nutrient solution in them instead of the plants growing in soil like in our outdoor garden. Just look at all these vegetables. It's a hydroponic farm. So in a hydroponic farm habitat, we can control all the elements that plants need. We control the temperature, we control the amount of light, we control the amount of water, and we control the amount of nutrients. We've created a habitat that is the perfect place for our vegetables to grow. Hmm, but you know what? There's one very obvious thing that's missing. Do you know what that is? Do you want to take a guess? Well, do you notice me slapping any mosquitoes in here? No, of course not. That's because there's no insects indoors. There's no mosquitoes, no flies. There's nothing in here that can bite you or that can attack our plants. But there's also something important that's missing. While there's no bad insects indoors that can bother our plants, there's also no good insects like butterflies and bees. So that leads me to a question. How can our plants get pollinated in a hydroponic habitat if there are no bees and butterflies to pollinate their flowers? Do you know what we have to do? We have to do the job of the bees and butterflies ourselves. That means we have to hand pollinate the flowers, taking the pollen from one flower and moving it to another flower. Check it out! I'm just going to use my little brush here and stick it into the flower. Then I'm going to stick the same brush into another flower so that the pollen falls off and the flower is pollinated. That way the plant can produce seeds and fruit. How cool is that? Okay, so now you know about the five main habitats on our planet. Do you remember all five of them? First, there's the polar, where the polar bears live. Then there's the grassland, where in Africa there are lions and giraffes. Then there's the rainforest, where it rains all the time and there are gigantic forests and monkeys and sloths. Then there's the desert, where animals like camels live. And finally, the aquatic habitat, where fish and whales and sharks live. We've also learned about two special habitats that we can create an outdoor vegetable garden like you might have at your school, and an indoor hydroponic garden. The reason we create these special habitats is so that inside of them, we can grow whatever food we want to eat. But remember, in a hydroponic garden habitat, zzz, you have to do the work of the bees. Zzz. I'm hydroponic farmer Joe from Green Our Planet. We'll see you next time. Bye. And remember, the Earth is the only planet in our solar system that has life on it. Which is why the Earth is the only planet that has such beautiful blues and greens. So let's remember to protect our planet and all the life on it. Bye!